Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Film Club Podcast, where every month we deep dive into a different aspect of cinema, an actor, director, genre, or franchise. Whatever it is, it's always fun at the Film Club. And this month, we're talking about... Musicals. And this week, we're talking about... Cry Baby. That's right, the 1990 musical starring Johnny Depp, directed by John Waters, and we are at Undercity Comics in Whittier, California. Which means we're doing a bonus episode today. And that means we have a guest. We do. This guest is very special to me because she's my best friend. Ariel, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Ariel. (laughs) Not the one from Under the Sea. Not the one from Under the Sea, unfortunately. 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 Mm. Did you get a lot of shit for that as a kid? So, funny thing. So, my name is Ariel. My last name is Lung. And when I was in high school, I was on the swim and water polo team. So, Mm -hmm. lots of jokes. Lots of nicknames. (laughs) You poor Uh, unfortunate soul. I know. That's a first for me. Thank you. Yes. Love that. So yeah, uh, Crybaby, um, Becky, was this something you offered, low-key offered to Ariel to come on for, or did Ariel bring this one to you? Oh, no, no, no. I I offered Ariel any pick, any musical, <laughs> and of course, Ariel being the undecided Libra that she is, I am. Uh, had no idea, couldn't think of any musical she's ever seen before. I said, pick for me. I'll watch it. So I thought, let me pick the <laughs> craziest musical and throw it at her and see if she could handle. And she's here, so I guess she could handle. So, have you ever seen Crybaby before? Never. Never. <laughs> Never. Never, ever. Never, ever, ever. Ever, ever, ever. Ever. What was your impressions going into it? Did you know anything about it going in? Nope, Ever heard nope, of it? Nope. I didn't want to read, like, anything on it. Didn't want to look it up. I just clicked the link that Becky sent me, and mm. that was it. That was it? That was it. So, uh, about 90 minutes later, how did you feel about the movie? <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's so weird. <laughs> I wish I had recorded my face watching it because it was a lot of like eyebrow frowning because it's like, what is going on? It was like, we did invite you to go see it at the Frida. That's true. I'm sorry. Also, side note, my sister went for the first time because she was performing her speech and debate thing, right? Yeah. And she was like, I love the Frida. It's so beautiful. I want to go every day. <laughs> And you guys live like... I know, we live like 10 minutes away. Yeah, We have to travel to get there. It is literally like a half hour trek. And I'm like, I'm so mad because it's the only place that shows like old movies. Yeah, we're going to be going soon. It's it's like the next couple of weeks. They're showing Amadeus there. And that is one of Becky's favorite movies. So very excited. I guess I'll maybe make an appearance. um. Question mark. Dun, dun, dun. That's her her way of letting me down gently. (laughs) She's like, yeah. I'm not going to be there. Very gently. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. When is it? Um, I have it, to look at the calendar, but it's a three-hour movie. There you go. Uh, that, there's our answer. And she's out. And she's out. <laughs> so, Dang, that's a really long time. So, but it's a beautiful movie. <laughs> so right after when the crybaby finished, you, you flabbergasted, right? Did you <laughs> end up liking it, disliking it? Like, I, w- I want to know your opening salvo here going in. I don't, I don't even know how to explain it. Because I like don't hate it, but I don't love it. Mm. I think she needs to watch it again. I, I was going to watch it, but then I was like, do I really need to watch this? Because it was a little all over the place. It was a little out there for it you. It was like a Grease meets The Outsiders meets Johnny Depp. Perfect. Strong. That's a yeah. strong lineup there. <laughs> that is a teenage girl's dream. <laughs> uh, spe- speaking of, uh, yes. uh, Miss Boo, uh, Becky. Yes, yes. So when was the first time you saw it? Last time you saw it? You know, Because um, this seems like a lot of boo energy in this movie it very much was i was like i know why she wanted me to watch this <laughs> i mean any chance i get to see johnny depp in a leather jacket i'm absolutely gonna go for it you watched the johnny depp trial like it was his comeback tour <laughs> i watched it because it was hilarious she's watching she- i will say some of the clips that i watched were freaking hilarious you watched the johnny depp trial and you're like this is his greatest performance greatest performance of all time he should get an oscar also fuck amber heard you still well, yeah. hate amber heard i do she crapped on his bed she did who does that that's how much you hate someone that's like next level you have to crouch over a bed <laughs> <laughs> give us like the skull <laughs> <Did she? laughs> i've always wondered about like the how she actually did did she like get up on like a like a gargoyle like on the edge of the bed <laughs> well after and- seeing her in that court case yeah she is a fucking gargoyle sitting there just crouching like, uh. <laughs> letting out a steamer i see Right on his pillow. Because, I mean, you know, if it's your partner and, you know, you, you accidentally crap the bed, accidentally, I'm going to get mad, but I'm not going to get that mad. It was an accident. It was an accident. Be like, That's an Always Sunny in Philadelphia episode, by the way. Where Is it really? Yeah, where Frank and Charlie, they're like sleeping in bed and they wake up and there's a <laughs> trial about which one of them shit the bed. 
<laughs> and the is, one that has crap still stuck in it. <laughs> it is one of the funniest uh, Always Sunny episodes. But yes, yeah, so boo, big boo energy over here. Yes. Cry baby. Um, First, la- last time. Last time I watched it before this was when we went to go see it at the Frida. Uh, also, first time seeing it on the big screen, which was really cool. And yeah, I mean, we got there first and I thought, oh, man, it's just going to be the two of us because I love this movie. Dean really hasn't seen this movie. Oh, no, I we'll get into that. We will. But <laughs> no, I mean, it was almost a packed show. And I was like, OK, cool. But uh, first time I saw this was in high school. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, fuck, yeah, young Johnny Depp in a leather jacket. This is my life now. I see the appeal, though. It's mm-hmm. very, very good looking. And you were like, eh, you know, young Johnny Depp doesn't do anything for me. You know what? Like, I get it. He's good looking. But then I was like, mm, not 100% there. Right? But then, like, seeing him all dressed up in the fits, I was like, damn. <laughs> when he got that drip going. In the car or on the bike. And I forgot that he sang. And, and, and yeah. we'll, we'll get into that because. He, he might not actually sing as much as you think. In this movie, at least. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. but uh, well, we know this is Ariel's first time watching the movie. What about you, Mr. Dean? When was the first time you saw this movie? Um, I was probably about five. Uh, so my sister is like nine years older than me. Okay. So if I'm five, she's 14, which lines up perfectly for her to be like young Johnny Depp. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> so she got this and this was like probably right when like dvds became like a thing or Mm -hmm. whatever and she's like oh got it and she watched it and because you know my sister's nine years older than me i'm watching whatever the fuck she's watching right so i've seen like moulin rouge like it's uh singing the rain a bunch when i was like really little crybaby i saw crybaby i when i was a kid probably like fucking 40 times (laughs) she really loved johnny she (laughs) really loved some johnny depp she even she was mad when we went to go to the frida that we didn't invite her and i was like i didn't no, I, I didn't. Have if she watched it forty times, you should have invited her. I probably should have. Yeah, I didn't even know that she liked the movie until we were driving. We got on the freeway. It goes, oh, by the way, my sister's mad that I didn't bring her with me, and I'm like, why didn't you bring your sister? I love her. You know, we could sit there and the three of us watch mm-hmm. Cry Baby, and he's just like, no, no, no. This is this is our time, damn it. But yeah, it, this was one of her like favorite favorite movies, favorite musicals. Why we could speculate, but you know. So, as a kid, I saw this movie a bunch of times, and then from the ages of, like, 8 to, like, 20, however the fuck old I am. You're almost 30. Almost 30. So, from that age, I'm like, I just never saw it. So, I'm like, I have no memory of the movie, except one of the funniest line deliveries in all of cinema history. My parents were killed by electricity. One of the funniest lines in cinema history. Like when I, he said that, I was like, what is when, going no, on? When he rips his shirt open and he has the electric chair tattooed across his chest. Yeah. Great, awesome gag, but I had like no memory of it. And then when we went to go see it at the Frida, I'm not gonna lie, it was like the lizard brain like kicking back in. You know how like you like, oh, I haven't seen this in a long time. Mm-hmm. I really don't like remember anything. But as soon as it starts, you're like, oh yeah, I can do every song in this movie. Like I, I could like, I remember Did you sing along. Oh, yeah, the whole movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. especially the whole when, movie. <laughs> when the squares were singing. He was, oh you know, Mr. Sandman or uh, what was the other song? Uh, Mr. Like- Sandman, Shaboom, Shaboom. Um, so I knew all the songs. I knew, like, I knew, like, I remembered, like, all the songs once they started. Like, as soon as you get, like, the one, two, three, and they go into it, mm-hmm. I could have done the whole fucking movie. But the way his eyes lit up for Shaboom, I, really I was ready for him song. to get up there and perform. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> JK, guys, this is a, a live show. Oh. Yes. By Dean. No. No, we're not. We're not doing that. But this is one of those movies where I'm like, I haven't seen it in so long. And then when it started, I'm like, oh, childhood memories. And now I watch it again. I'm like, fuck, is this movie good? I don't know if it's good. It's fucking entertaining as hell. I don't know if it's good. I mean, I think you had the biggest laugh in the movie when Hatchet Face's mom's, um, what was it, a her steel fuck- tube? It, it was <laughs> her fucking iron lung there from you polio. Go. The wheel breaks and her husband's like, don't worry, honey, I got it. And pulls out a mini jack <laughs> specifically for the fucking iron lung to replace the tire like he's a NASCAR. And I'm like, what buffoonery is this? She's like, oh man, I got a flat. <laughs> She's like, yeah. Oh. Okay, I will say that was funny. Everything else I was like, what am I watching? <laughs> but for anyone out there who hasn't seen it yet, yes. I do have the back of the box here so you can get a sense of what the hell the movie's about. Okay. Right? This is very truncated because there's a lot going on here. It's a very deep movie. But this this will help you. You know, very this is your deep. pitch. Yes. It's a big box. It's a big box. <laughs> <Mm-mm-mm-mm>. 
A prim and proper <laughs> schoolgirl falls head over heels for the motorcycle riding juvenile delinquent crybaby. And this leads to an all out class war between the rich squares and the poor drapes, culminating in a rockabilly game of chicken where only one group will survive. And, you know, comedy ensues. There's a lot of fun dance numbers. There's a lot of, you know, I would say borderline X rated sex jokes in this. Yes. Oh, definitely. Uh, but sure. yeah, a lot of fun. Fun for the whole family. You could show this to a six year old and so won't, like, I don't leave know, a scar that on him. Those makeout scenes on the park. Or wherever that was. <laughs> at Turkey Point. Turkey Point. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, at Turkey Point when they're like had the, the blankets on, everybody's like making out. Yeah, it's like, you know, uh, that thing in the 50s where they'd go like up to like whatever peak, you know, make out point and they'd all be in the car. But this, you know. Yeah, but they're like, everybody's there. Like the next couple isn't like more than a yard away. <laughs> you can go, you can go <laughs> over, tap your homie on the shoulder and be like, yo, dude, bump it. Mm, fist bump. You're like, yeah, we're getting there, boys. Or more like, Hey, after this, you want to get some chili fries? Yeah, okay. yeah, let's go. So I, I gotta, I gotta ask, you know. So you don't, you you didn't see this movie beforehand, right? No, I didn't even want to read anything about it. I just went in very blind. Okay, clever girl. Which is funny because when I looked it up afterwards, I like how the description's like, "Oh, a uh, boy with the heart of gold tries to win over." I was like, "Come on, heart of gold." <laughs> okay, sure, sure, sure. Okay, sure. It sounded more appealing than. Than what the actual movie is. Sorry, Becky. <laughs> it's okay. Like it, but it's okay. Like, they really like sugarcoated it. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that's because this is a John Waters movie. Mm -hmm. You know John Waters? Not really. Not really. He was the guy that came up with Hairspray. Okay. Directed the original Hairspray. He directed like Pink Flamingos, Multiple Maniacs. And he has a wild career. Yes. Wild. His first, like, big break movie was this movie called Pink Flamingos, which starred Divine, mm -hmm. very, very famous drag queen. Uh, and in that movie, there's a point where Divine eats dog poop. What? Uh, there's a lot. There's two real blowjobs in the movie. Uh, there's are, a, you, are you real? This is a real movie. This is a real. It's in the Criterion Collection, by the way. You can, you oh can see goodness. this in beautiful 4K. Now she's like, maybe Crybaby wasn't so bad. <laughs> I only hear bag fashion crybaby, but oh my god! But, but, but here, and John Waters has always stated that he's like he loves like trash cinema. He mm -hmm. gets you know his his jollies from going to like his old like jollies. Whatever. He's breaking them out today. I'm breaking out the words here. Well, he loves that whole thing of like he he remembers going to like 50s drive-ins where you would see like shitty monster movies and everyone's just laughing, having a good time. They're campy as hell, and he just enjoys that. So he's like, I love making campy trash movies. And he starts off making something that's borderline. Por now, it's not even. It's actual pornography. If you have live two live blowjobs, two live blowjobs, yeah, not just one, yes. two. Well, yes. That's live pornography. Indeed, <laughs> that's how Divine got her start. But what a weird set that must have been on. Just strange, very strange energy. But I, mm. I just want to know, like you know, your speculation. I gave you the description of you know pink flamingos. How do you go from that to crybaby? Well, no, you go from that to hairspray. Because Hairspray's the reason why Crybaby was made. Hairspray's basically the first movie he ever made that actually got him, like, actual buzz. Like, he made, a, like, actual money off of it. Mm -hmm. It turned into a Broadway play. Mm -hmm. um, Hair Hairspray is still performed today. It, it, it travels. Yeah, and Hairspray is the reason why we got a $12 million Crybaby movie. It was $12 million? Twelve mil. Yeah. You, know, you want to know how much it made? <laughs> How much? Tell me. Not $12 million. <laughs> it didn't. Yeah, this is a box office bomb. Yes. It was the only time John Waters got his like blank check to make whatever he wanted. And they shut that fucking door on him right after the box office piece came in. I, obviously. Because I was like, that doesn't look like a, that amount of money went into the film. No, it, it only made $3 million. It opened up at 1,200 screens across America. So didn't really have a wide release for it. But Hairspray was... The blank paycheck that he got. And they were like, mm -hmm. run. You know, do whatever you want to do. And they're like, yeah, John, never again. So how much did would you think this movie cost? Did, would you think this was like a low budget? Like he made this for like $3 million with a couple of boys from, you know, the TV pictures, you know? I don't I don't know if I would say it was a low budget one. Because mm -hmm. obviously money went into it. Yeah. But it doesn't look like it was a $12 million. Wait, did you say twelve million or twelve billion? Twelve million. Million. B okay. Billion. This ain't James Cameron. <laughs> James <laughs> Cameron's crybaby. He's like, we're gonna CGI the whole thing. See, imagine if he did 
if they remade Crybaby. Who would you get on to, Pandora? Who would you get to star in your Crybaby remake? I mean, you could use Johnny Depp again. <laughs> it's, it's just Johnny Depp. I they do no like young like de aging <laughs> thing. It's just actual like fifty something year old Johnny Depp now. I'd be there for that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. So so you're not a John Waters person, but you're a Johnny Depp person. Um, no. I wouldn't say I like no. the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I like the the <laughs> new I think you broke Dean. <laughs> Charlie and the Chocolate Factory was he was really weird, but it was pretty good. Did, is that just like a thing? Did this movie just curse Johnny Depp to playing the weird guy for his career? Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said like, oh, it's it's The Outsiders meets Grease meets Johnny Depp because knowing Johnny Depp and the roles that he gets a little bit weird. Mm-hmm. So it makes sense. But he did really good though. Like in the movie, he really embraced that really weird dialogue and he ran with it. I mean, you're also able to see like the different shades of Johnny Depp. That's true. Because this is before Edward Scissorhands. This is the reason why he got Edward Scissorhands. Tim Burton was on the fence and he saw mm-hmm. him in this and he was like, okay, no, you're actually a good actor. So you have like a little bit of like Gilbert Grape mm-hmm. mm. the, on the outside, right? right? Yeah. Right. And then on the inside, you have all his other characters after this movie. That's what that is. It It is just kind of, it's kind of weird to me because you watch the movie, right? And it's like, man, I'm real glad Ever Scissorhands picked up for you because if not, this would have ruined your career, <laughs> sir. Because he's not like bad in the movie. He's really entertaining and he's giving in to like this tongue in cheek ridiculousness, but Man, this movie did not do well. Mm-mm. This movie was weird as hell. The critics were so like... So freaking weird. So freaking <laughs> weird, right? And Weird. It, and it's also a thing where I'm like, Johnny Depp, you're a really good actor. But if Tim Burton didn't see this, if they went with like Robert Downey Jr. or Jim Carrey... Also, Jim Carrey almost was Crybaby. I want you to know that. And, and Tom Cruise. <laughs> Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, really? We wouldn't have to go that far for The Outsiders if Tom Cruise yeah, was in Yeah, no, it. I was about to say. Dang. Comes full circle. Also, The Outsiders is really good. You you, you would have rather been on The Outsiders episode? Yeah. I read the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then we watched the movie right after the book, mm-hmm. right? It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I will watch it again and again and again and again. So, Young so, Rob Lowe? Oh, my God. I see. I was going to throw... I was going to say that because you strike me as a... You're like, hey, I'm not really into Johnny Depp. You're probably a Rob Lowe girl. I'm, I'm a soda pop girl. Mm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. She still watches Parks and Rec just for uh, Rob Lowe. <laughs> I mean, Parks and Rec. Nah, I watched show. it for for Andy. Fat, fat Andy. <laughs> yes. You're into fat Andy. It's the OG. You think now that he's skinny and all beefed up, he's I'm... still not attractive. He's still good looking. He's just a little heavy. A little heavy. You know, a little he's, bit. He's, he's, he's still rapping, talented. He's, he's still good looking. Heavy boys out here. You know. He's got character. He's got character. Oh my gosh, that's what all like Latino families say. Oh, he's not that cute, but he's got character. <laughs> I, I mean, that's also what Hatchet Face says in this movie. <laughs> she does. <laughs> Poor thing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Do you know that people... Okay, after the movie came out and, like, fans started being like, oh, my God, you were hatchet face. Wow, you don't really look that ugly in real life. People were telling her yeah. that. Yeah. No way. Mm-hmm. That's uh, so mean. Well, she was... Well, she thought it was hilarious because she was like, oh, so you do think I'm kind of... Hey. Hey. Because... <laughs> Because, like, oh, God, do we want to just go through, like, the, the drapes real quick? Yeah, the, yeah. the Crybaby gang? I think we have to. Because top of the list, you know, we have, you know, Crybaby, Wade Walker, right? Then we have Pepper, his sister. His, mm-hmm. Yes, uh, played by Ricky Lake. Pray, yeah, Ricky Very Lake. Very pregnant, lots of children. It's like, girl. Also, I'm trying to do the math who's, who's here. Who's the baby daddy, though? I th- oh, Is I that think, guy that proposed I, to her? I think it's the, the guy that proposed to her, yeah. But we don't know if he's baby daddy of the first two. Well, I'm also doing the math here, and I'm like, were you pregnant at 11? Because one of her kids is like, she's like, I'm looking for two kids, one seven, one five. And I'm like, you're like a what? She's S- definitely one, one in high she's school. She's in high school. A- is she like, is she's like 18? Well, if 19? you live in the, what is it called? The the hillbilly place? Turkey Point. Turkey, Turkey Point. point. <laughs> the, the, you know how you can tell when you may enter Turkey Point? When you see the stars and bars all across Ooh, the land. Doggy. And I'm like, guys, you are in Maryland. Where's yeah. your where's the Southern Pride in Maryland? Oh yeah, it takes place in Baltimore, son. It's yeah. very hmm. Mm. V- very what? I don't I don't know. Mm. But when does hair hairspray take place? I think it's the same time, the nineteen fifties. It's 50s also in Baltimore. 60s. Yeah, well all of John does he Waters. Have, like a, a personal connection to Baltimore? He's yeah, from- he's from Baltimore. Okay. Yeah, and he he tried to make all of his movies in Baltimore, and Crybaby is like the only one he didn't make 
in Baltimore up to this point. Is it like Nicholas Sparks and all his like love stories take place in, I don't know if it's Northern Carolina or, or South Carolina? One of the Carolinas. Who, who's Nicholas Sparks? The Notebook. The Notebook. The author of The Notebook and all those it, like love cheesy mo- books. Who? Is, you don't the, know. is The Notebook the one with Ryan Gosling? Yes. The yeah. last song with Miley Cyrus and Liam Hensler? No. no, no I got no. nothing here. Gene, you need to watch more, more romantic movies. You mean chick flicks. <laughs> Coming Romantic. from the man that loves Titanic. Titanic is the a masterpiece. Ultimate chick flick. It, Titanic it is the is ultimate chick flick. Titanic is a great film. Uh, but the ro- love story is the worst part of Titanic. Why? What? Jack you... and Rose? No, he's more, you know, he's like, yeah, that door looks historically accurate. And I'm just like, I, I <laughs> homie, not, we're here I for am, the love story. I am not that picky. But here's, it's the thing where, okay, in tangent time now, Jack and Rose... <laughs> Are like the least interesting because they're both like, oh yes, we're perfect, blah 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 blah. But all the characters, all the like side the characters, British accent yeah. <laughs> whatever. But like, like, um, um, like Kathy Bates in that movie, uh, Millie Brown, I think is her no, name. No, the or, unsinkable Molly Brown. Molly Brown, she is great. The unsinkable. Yeah, because she was because she, was, cause she, she got, survived. Yeah, she survived, and then I think uh, like a few years later, they sunk another boat she was on, sunk, and mm-hmm. she survived that mm-hmm. one. So she's the unsinkable Molly Brown. Yeah, I'm like, well, she's really interesting and fun. And then you have like the captain who's like, oh, this is really interesting. You know, the fucking band. There's like, gentlemen. It's been an honor playing with you tonight. I'm like, that's Honestly, that's the best emotional point of the movie. That that part made me cry, and then the dead baby in the water afterward. Yeah. That one gets me. That one gets you. I don't know why. I know it's a fake baby, obviously, but <laughs> <People> <laughs> I'm like, like this baby. I don't know. It's James Cameron. He spares no expense. <laughs> James Cameron. He's the scientist from Jurassic Park. He's like, spare no expense. Mm-hmm. James, did you actually make dinosaurs for your for your fucking Avatar movie? <laughs> No expense. Is that why no it costs expense. $2 billion? <laughs> yes, $2 billion. Wait, but real quick, yeah. um, to finish up on Titanic, have you gone to the, the, oh, yeah, you live, went to the exhibit? The, light, the live exhibit in LA? There's a live exhibit yeah. of Titanic? Yes, it's really cool. No, no, you no. You can touch an iceberg. I can touch an iceberg. It's just like a little thing that you put your hand in, but still, it's ice. Is, is it the, the iceberg? <laughs> Is so, it the iceberg? See, see you paid how much to, to touch a block of ice? <laughs> I don't know. My date paid for the, the ticket. So. Oh, it's a very Titanic style t- style uh, experience. <laughs> so really someone might go. someone might not survive the end of the date. I, well, I'm well, here. You're so. here, so oh. clearly he's not. Oh. <laughs> Why he, do you think I didn't tell you? He, oh, so he, oh, you just threw his ass overboard to survive. <laughs> I see how it is. Ten ten recommended, and then the gift shop. Oh, do love a gift shop. The gift shop. <laughs> i like how you're like best part the gift, gift shop. shop well yeah Boom. obviously well, I... you're like drop the drumsticks well, gift shop i really like gift shops they have really nice stuff yeah Get stuff your... that you don't need at all but you're like it's cool enough for me to purchase do i really need titanic postcards yes they're historically yeah. correct so yes historically accurate postcards mm-hmm. drawings don't you like drawings like I... architectural drawings are cool do they just Wait, are they selling like the Blueprints? drawings? No, those. Dra- oh, for a second, you said drawings. I'm like, are they selling like the Kate Winslet drawing from fucking Titanic in that? <laughs> no, but shop? they have it on display. Oh, really? Now Dean's game. Eh, maybe. I don't know if it's actually the real one, but you know, the one that was at the bottom of the ocean for ninety years. You know? mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure they have. If I remember correctly, they have a fake uh, the diamond, the sapphire, um, the, heart the heart of the, of the ocean. ocean, the heart of the ocean, that thing, that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I remember correctly, this was also a few months ago. I don't remember. Oh, okay. But do you, you remember Crybaby? I remember Crybaby because I finished watching it this morning. <laughs> uh, hey, I fell strong. asleep. I fell asleep, but I was also very tired. Mm-hmm. But then I was like, I can't go in. Like, I have to rewatch it. Good thing it's only like, I only, it was only like an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like 85 minutes. It's like really, really tight. Sh- oh. Yeah, it was really short. And it kind of explains like the how fast paced the whole movie is. Yeah. I I did the same thing where last night I'm like, oh, I'm going to give it a rewatch, you know, because I'm like, oh, okay, I watched it like not that long ago, but it's like, I probably should rush up on it. And I'm turning it on and I'm like, all right, as soon as this movie's over, I'm going to go lay down because it is like, <laughs> what are the times? Oh, it's like nine, nine thirty. Oh, man, oh, I'm getting old. I'm getting nine thirty? You were sleepy? Well, yeah. He's, I, he's sleepy by like seven. I'm, I'm an old person. And this Grandpa movie is, over here. This movie is like... <laughs> Boom, in, out, finish, like, a little over an hour. Because I think the last, like, five minutes is credits. And it's, yeah, like... Yeah, probably. And it's, like, so quick. 
what is it? I, I also love how the movie just has no issues being like, well, why does Allison want to want want to go over with the drapes? And what, what was the line she says? Was it, I'm so tired of being good? Mm-hmm. She, she says that. Her first line in the movie, she's like, I'm tired of being good. <laughs> Boom. We, we got a movie, boys. We got a story. It's in. And, uh, you know, she sees a young Johnny Depp and she's like, yeah, yeah, I'm willing to break a few laws for that ass. I'm like, let's go. Same. Yeah. It's okay for me. I'm sorry. It's okay. But, I mean, you like, what's his name? Timothy uh, Chalamet. Chalamet. Ch- yeah, oh, he's so handsome. What? <laughs> but I saw. But I saw. What? I saw. Here, here we go. I Timothy, saw this. The, fuck, the, the weird horse face dude <laughs> with the with the triangle say, I saw face, that right? TikTok yesterday <laughs> of him looking like a horse. I was like, oh my gosh, it kind of does look like him. That's okay. He's still very handsome. Really? Mm-hmm. How many times have you seen Dune? Mm, I haven't even seen it. Wow, he's in the movie. <laughs> I know he is. Wow. With Zendaya. Not low Zendaya. Mm, I see, I see. She's awesome. She's badass. Come on. Well, she is. Yeah, but just okay. to show, you know, the difference, you know, I'm into Johnny Depp and she's into Shamalama what, whatever. Shamalama? Shamalama Ding Dong. Yes. <laughs> but who's it? who could be like complete opposite of Johnny Depp? A complete opposite? Well, I mean, like, we see Willem Dafoe in here, and I think he's probably the opposite end of the attraction spectrum of a Johnny Depp. And this is very, very young Willem Dafoe. He's also in the movie for a minute. minute. Really? He's the prison guard that does the speech. That does the prayers. About loving Eisenhower and all that shit. I know, but I guess, yeah, he is in this for a minute. Also, can we talk about how dirty his feet were when he got up on the bunk (laughs) bed? My goodness. Everybody has clean, sparkly feet for being in jail. (laughs) Freaking Johnny Depp with the dirty ass feet. Maybe they made him walk there, barefoot. I I feel like there's plenty of time to put. How dirty could this prison be? It's a prison. It's dirty. Where there's I, like dirt. I like how that's what you zeroed in on. <laughs> You're like, this movie's so weird. The musical numbers, but oh, look at Johnny Depp's feet. Disgusting. I paid attention to all like the little details. Pretty also, good. the the opening scene when they're getting their polio vaccination. Yeah, mm-hmm. that shot was freaking huge. Yeah. But obviously it's a fake shot. But I was like, damn, this is huge. Oh, that that shit was real. <laughs> Those Everybody was getting their polio vaccine. They, they were like, all right, kids, time to get an old polio vaccine. <laughs> Bam. It's scary. Terrifying. Spooky. Okay, so we were talking about the drapes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We need to do the rundown. The huge so, tangent, my gosh. It, it life happens. We get that, on to that, the, that's what we a do. A lot of things. That's okay. So um, we are, so hatchet face, right? She's like the muscle of the group, right? <laughs> Did you see the way she landed that helicopter? She took control. I also like how when she's doing in that scene, she's dressed up like uh, Catwoman from the 60s Batman series. <laughs> yeah. I mean, considering they're in a helicopter that they would have flown in the 60s series. Yeah. And I'm, I'm watching it and I'm trying to, because John Waters has this thing where he's like, Oh, you gotta you know, like love the outsiders or whatever. You know, everyone's beautiful. You know, they have their own inner thing. It's like it's so lame being normal on that stuff. It's so lame being normal. It's so lame being normal. <laughs> and Hatchet Face is, is the character where I'm like, you are the most John Waters character I've seen that's not named Divine. I, I do like in the opening when he like grabs her, pinches her ass, and she like, <laughs> her. I will say her face did start, startle me at first. <laughs> I would have the first time around. <laughs> I, I was not expecting that. I would have paid to see your reaction. <laughs> I wish my, because I watched it like last night, my sister was playing Sims in my room, right? Of of course, Sims <laughs> just a, Sims. a fine game. It is a fine game, best game, right? Anyway, so I wish she had recorded me when I first saw her face. Did but you then, scream? No, I was just like, I just you were taken taken aback. I was taken aback, and then as I was drinking my green juice, I was really thirsty. Anyway, that green was juice. that. I had green juice. Well, I drink it in the morning, but I don't know why I was craving it last night. I was like, instead of drinking water, let me just drink some of this green juice. <laughs> and I'm over here. Let me just drink some Dr. Pepper and some, <laughs> some, some water. So you were taken aback. I was taken aback. But then I like her her uh, when she like pulls out her little knife. I honestly look like a dagger, too, to be honest. It was a switchblade. Really, yeah. That was not a switchblade. Is it? That's a switchblade. It looks huge. For comedic effect. And also, when you got to shank a bitch, you got to make sure you can shank a bitch. Yeah, he touched her ass. Valid. I'm just saying. But yeah. Then I was like, is it just the makeup? Like, I was really curious. I was like, what's on her face? <laughs> there, There is a lot of uh, technique going in 
to Hatchet Face's makeup because it you're you're right. Like I watching the movie, I'm like, how much of this is is there like prosthetics going on? Yeah, I don't know. I was like, is it just like makeup placement? Obviously, the eyebrows are all over little the place. McDonald's yeah. eyebrows. The, the, <laughs> the lipstick is so off center. <laughs> yeah. Or, her teeth. Yeah. My gosh. But then you know what's funny? Her parents had the same exact teeth, so it's just like poor dental hygiene. I, I, I mean, the whole family just looked kind of rough. Very rough. She had polio. No, she had tuberculosis. Oh, she had tuberculosis. My bad. Yes, yes, yes. She was in an iron lung. But I mean, they all look very run down. Yes. The dad looked okay. He he looked like he probably could still go to work, you know. Oh, definitely. Probably Desi, wouldn't you know. get followed around if you walked into a in a convenience store. <laughs> Because he'd probably do the shaking. Mm. I don't know, but he was a uh, dare I say normalish. Normalish. <laughs> normalish with the a bit of a cigarette issue and alcohol issue. Uh. And I can't remember his name, the dad's name, because he's an actor that was in a movie from the fifties called Live Fast Die Young, and it's basically the same premise of Cry Baby, where it's just these juvenile delinquents. They're you know a problem, and there's a whole court case, so that's why they kind of tie him in because. He's one of the juvenile del- juvenile delinquents in the movie, and now he's oh, one of the parents of you know. It's kind of funny though. Yeah, it's all of these like fifties pulp movies that you know you see on TV that are just kind of like wow, okay, it's not the Outsiders or the Wild One, but it's still entertaining. The Outsiders was made in, like the eighties. Yeah, but it's the Wild old. One. I like how I like how you were just like yeah, it's like these fifties movies like the Outsiders, and I'm like that. <laughs> Rob, it was in the eighties. Coppola directed the movie. I, I didn't. Hey, I didn't show up till it the nineties. It so. was based in the fifties. So it how was. Would we know. Thank you. Sure, because Rob Lowe's in it, and he's yes. not ninety five today. So he's <laughs> hey, probably from the eighties. We see how good he takes care of himself. He yeah. might live, you know, till he's a hundred, hundred twenty. I mean, and and then if it's not just, it's not just Rob it. Lowe. It's it's everybody else that's in it. Yeah. Patrick Swayze, Tom well, Cruise, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. He looks Macho. so be up in that movie though <laughs> oh tom cruise yeah it is it is wild to me how tom cruise is name? one of those actors that just never ages right like once he hit like 30 he's like oh, you know what this is good i'm just gonna stay like, I'm gonna this, look like forever. this forever and i'm gonna run the same way forever very fast <laughs> naruto run <laughs> <laughs> okay did you know that tom cruise actually trained like with olympic runners to get that running technique down so he could Not run surprised. as fast as possible are you serious? In, and, yeah, that's a real His thing. His is dedicated then. Oh, yeah. In, have you ever seen the movie Cocktail with Tom Cruise? Mm-mm. Okay. In the movie Cocktail, he's doing like bar flare, right? Where you're flipping all this stuff like around while you're making drinks, right? He, I think you've seen it in like videos, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he learned how to do that. But because in real life, Tom Cruise is left-handed. He learned how to do everything with his right hand. That's crazy. And not only that, in every movie you see Tom Cruise in, he never shoots a gun with his left hand or he writes with his left hand he trained himself to be ambidextrous Mm -hmm. just for movie roles because he's like the the hero is always right-handed it's one of those weird esoteric things about tom cruise because scientology turns you into a madman i guess oh i did i did go to dinner one day and i had to park right next to the blue building (laughs) the blue building the blue building (laughs) the fuck's the blue building the the scientology (laughs) building the scientology building it's blue it's a big ass building yeah that looks like it was it used to be like a, a hospital. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, yeah. Or an asylum. I don't know. Um, Por que no los dos. But it's, it's bright blue. Can't miss it. Did Were you confused because you thought she parked next to Ikea? A little bit. Okay. Wait. Is, is there a Scientology Ikea? What? You didn't know that? That's not a thing. That is not a thing. <laughs> I'm, I like I'm how just, gullible I am. I'm just like, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know that Ikea and, is actually and, the- And Ikea is still in business? <laughs> <laughs> you know ikea that that's the planet in in um in in dianetics that the aliens come from you didn't know that oh jeez, so much lore so much lore deep lore but moving on and then afterwards you get meatballs and uh, ice cream yeah, meatballs. so after that we have wanda who is the um how would you describe what Wa- yeah okay wanda the boob <laughs> I like girl how, how she like later on in the film when they're like fighting they're in the rumble mm-hmm. and uh, i was hoping you'd catch that part. <laughs> She like I don't know stabs him with her. She, no, she, she winds she up her ro- boobs, winds up her tits, and drops <laughs> this guy. And you see like the sheer pain on his face. He's like, oh, like like a god, you know. Great acting because I don't think 
if, unless she had something pointing in her in her bra. She she had the old school bullet bra on. Yeah, maybe? she did. She did. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing I noticed. To be honest, I was like, "Dang, girl, you're really <laughs> selling it." <laughs> they were just in your face. How do you not look? They were in her face too. Yeah, they're pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> Is is that what you to look at objectifying tell- women looking at their no, no. tits? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we They're have nothing better to do. Observing their chesticles the I, whole time. Did I not say that I was paying attention to close detail? Johnny Depp's dirty feet, <laughs> very pointy boobs, mm. the, with the bullet bra. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I love Wanda's parents though. Yes, they are. They were the so most like hunky-dory. naive to what this girl was doing. I mean, I think Wanda's mom is my favorite scene of the movie. Can we please can we please take Wanda the fuck home? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, that was, yes. I like how they bleeped it out. Well, because you can only say fuck in a movie once, I guess, when they made this. Really? The, yeah, because that was the like the old school rule is if you wanted a PG-13, you get one fuck. You can't have any more. Really? Okay, yeah. I'm learning something new today. I didn't so, know. It's I not just like, I was like, here, I was like, what? Then why did you say it? <laughs> so it's like, you know, yeah, this joke. And it's like, okay, well, we're going to have to beep her out. And I guess this was the first time that they added beeps into a movie. Oh. So it was just like. Got- you know, theatrical release movie. Because usually mm-hmm. you just let it go. Yeah. Right? For theatrical release. They only bleep stuff out in like TV. But for this, we're like, we got to have the joke out of, you know, her asking, what does that mean? Okay, I want to sound important too, so let me just. I want to sound important. <laughs> and then everyone's laughing, and she's just like, I don't get it, but okay. So. I managed it pretty good. I was like, I can't believe she said that in a courtroom. <laughs> so so that's then... your favorite scene? <laughs> I mean, there's so many, but I mean, I think that's one of my favorite lines of the movie. It's you, pretty good. Do you have a favorite line, favorite scene? I don't, I don't know. You don't know? It's you didn't pretty... even like the movie at all? You're like, it was fine. It was, it was, it was okay. She's okay. pretty fresh to it. Mm. That's true. I watched, finished watching it this morning. It's pretty fresh. It, it's very fresh. Strong. <laughs> very fresh. I mean, that line, uh, Wanda's beat it creep, that's another popular one that fans like refer to. It's on buttons and pins mm. and whatever. So Mom it's and Dad, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> Who, what is that character's name? He, I think they only name him once at the courtroom. Oh, um, He's the tall, skinny kid with, that's got the doo-wop hair going yeah, on. Yeah, Hatchet Face's uh, boyfriend. Yeah. Oh my um, gosh, they were basically... They had really interesting scenes together. <laughs> uh, what is his name? But I like how he was to Hatchet Face. You're, you're beautiful. It's like, See, so uh, cute. He, yeah. Hatchet Face found love. We can all find love. All. Fuck the both of you for staring at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, try and get deep in this movie and you guys are like, Dean, shut the fuck up. <laughs> We're talking about green juice and shit. Green juice is good for you. Is it? I think you'd like it. I, it sounds like it would taste like grass, though. Mm-mm. Surprisingly, no. I mean, mm. Dean's afraid of eating green things, so I don't think green juice would work. I'm not afraid of eating green things. It's just I don't trust it. There's a difference. It's good. Uh, like I, they have, a, they have a roots drink too, and I, I, because when you think of roots, that sounds very earthy, right? Because yes. it's a root, <laughs> but surprisingly, it tastes really good. <laughs> interesting i don't think you could sell them on it interesting yes you also have a uh, some really nice lemonades you like lemonade blood kumquat orange blood orange kumquat blood <laughs> you you you, she, you guys heard that right she started with blood cum shot no, orange right no. did she i'm kumquat, pretty sure oh, no. the, the fruit the no. fruit the, okay for a quick second there i was like what <laughs> Y- oh, really you thought crybaby was a little too weird for you honey <laughs> really so but this is also a musical do you have a favorite song one that a nice good earworm i will say so i i completely forgot that it was a musical yeah. Tell you, i went in i just clicked the link i was like i'm gonna watch it right yeah, yeah. and the first thing the first song is crybaby right yeah yeah and then they're injecting them with the they're doing the vaccine the vaccinations and i was like oh they found a song that <laughs> That goes with the scene. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> because they're all getting their shots and they're all crying. You're like, oh, that's the point. This movie is a is a vaccination oh, story. Of course, that's I just what thought it was is. so. I was like, oh wow, they found like a good song. How nice! <laughs> but then I it, it clicked that it was a musical. How how long did that that take to click in? Was the it? second song. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's Outsiders meets Greeks. Meets, uh, meets Greece meets Johnny Depp. A genre unto himself. Mm-hmm. So, favorite song? Uh, favorite song. I like the one when they're at the Enchanted Forest. 
<laughs> Mr. Sandman? <laughs> the Enchanted Forest. That, that's the name of the park. That oh, is the is name that? of the park. But yeah. I just I just like how you're saying that like it's a Disney musical. <laughs> I love the song in the Enchanted Forest. <laughs> the gallivanting, the singing well, I, I guess I could have said, oh, at the theme park. But yeah, yeah when they're singing uh, Sandman, mm-hmm. right? Mr. Sandman. But like, I just like the the acting part of it where it was supposed to be a duet. Mm. He was like, can you sing with me? Right? But he's and like taking up the whole play, the whole song. Yeah, and I'm like, he brings all the dudes you. with him and they're all like, yeah, man, you know, it's just the boys. And she's like, well, fuck you. You know, it's supposed to be the yeah, two so of I us. I like how she smacks him and then she finishes off the song. Yeah. Mm. Very ladylike. Love Indeed. It. Strong. Strong. She was sick and tired of being a good girl. She was. She just wanted to be bad. She wanted to be bad. I like how she was like doing her makeup too. She's like, be bad. It's like, okay. <laughs> and her, her bad girl makeover, which was like party pants. And, it like, wasn't even that bad. I was like, just, well, you, you just like kind of dressed up like nice, like you're going out to the city kind of oh, thing. Oh, you know what else is a good song? When she's trying to break him out, like Mr. Jailer. Oh, please, Mr. Oh, Jailer. Yeah. Mr. Jailer. My that favorite song. One. That one's actually really good. Mm-hmm. Cause it was, it was, I was, I think it was the catchiest song out of all of them. To be honest, I I agree with you. That's get, that's my favorite song yeah. in the movie. Yeah, his eyes. Lit. I like he how he was like, in wow. his tidy whiteies afterwards. That's what sold you on the movie. You were like, I don't know if I'm into Johnny Depp. Then tidy whiteies. She's like, I might be back into Johnny. She's like, I just thought it was like, so funny. funny. Let me, you know, let me see him <laughs> in his tidy whiteies and you know his his jail top. I just thought it was funny that he's like, oh, I was like, oh, he's gonna escape. Wow, right? <laughs> <laughs> he ended up not escaping. <laughs> but tidy whiteies though. Those tidy whities and they're real dirty afterwards, so I appreciate that. They kept that <laughs> continuity, right? They kept yes. that continuity in mind. Okay, so he, his pants fall off, right? And he has these bright white underwear, right? And then afterwards, after he was done, you know, rummaging through the sewer, he was he, they were brown. <laughs> he was in there for a while, you know. No, you gotta... I know. That's why I was like, I like that they didn't change him out of the clothes. <laughs> they were magical tidy whities <laughs> Didn't hit him with those oxy clean, you know. Mm-hmm. No nope. Scotch guard him. No, nope. nothing nope. on him. No, nope. I like it. See, <laughs> you, you like that's it. what I'm telling you. Attention to detail. I was paying attention to the small little details. That's that's what Ariel looks for in a good movie. The details, <laughs> damn it. Detail. The details. It's kino. So, what about your favorite song, Miss um, Boo, Miss Becky, over there? Uh, I mean, I love on a high Johnny Depp horse over there. Yes, very much so. But no, I love Please, Mister Jailer. It's a great scene. Um, but I think my favorite has to be G. That's in the beginning. That's the first time we hear Johnny Depp sing when he's mm, in the car. Yeah. After, you know, he, you know, kind of love taps grandma's car. Yeah. And Get her attention. Well, yeah, it's a little love tap. I, also, side, no, I like how when they get in the car with the grandma and all stuff, yeah. how he's in the backseat. It's like, yeah, you get in the backseat. You're going to live as, you lived as a square, you're going to die as a square. <laughs> get it, old bitch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Driving through. Yeah, because Baldwin's kind of a. A bitch himself. He is a little jerk face, and then setting up all the the cars on fire, and then has the audacity to call Johnny Depp a criminal. How I dare mean, you? He <laughs> he is a criminal. Like, are we being? What did he do? That was he didn't do anything. I, that was I, I didn't he see didn't, anything. He didn't do anything bad. Where? Actually, you know what? No, Where? Yeah, he didn't I'm, do I'm anything bad. I'm giving into the stereotype of you know guys rolling around with stars and bars on their gear as because... criminals. Just because they're you, you know we're a podcast and I, doing that with your fingers doesn't translate oh, to sound. Oh, right? I know, but I know it bothers you, so I'm gonna do it. So, but that is an interesting thing. Like, there's no redeeming aspects to any of the squares. No. throughout the entire movie, mm-hmm. it's it's just the grandmother, right? And that's like the last. And she had a change of heart too. She even put that little skull pin on. Granny was pretty cool. I was like, Granny, it didn't take much to convince <laughs> you. She was low key in love with the drape when she was younger. That that's she was the original Allison. It, yeah, it yeah, goes yeah, back yeah. to the Notebook. Allie's mom, she's in love with the <gasps> guy, true. and her her parents were like, "No, you got to marry a rich guy." And she was unhappy her whole life. And then <gasps> she tells true. Allie, she's like, "I come here every day and I watch him work and shovel all day." And she's like, "Wow, your life was so fucked." <laughs> <laughs> you got to watch the Notebook. It sounds so fucking weird. We it's missed not, it at the it, Frida. It was there a couple of weeks it ago. It was. Why yeah. Didn't you tell me. It. it was a book club thing where they had the movie screening and then they Dang. talked about it right afterwards. <gasps> you live there. I know. I don't. I you don't. should be the one telling, hey, guys, there's something going on at this cool art house theater. I don't like, leave my house, house you guys. This is like the first time I've left my house. Yeah. Since that, two weeks ago. Yeah, she's a, <laughs> technically an agoraphobic. She fears the outside. We're This is therapy for her. Yes. We bribed her with Starbucks. I, 
Starbucks and I was touching the brick wall behind us as if I've never seen a brick wall before in my life. <laughs> it is it is a nice brick wall. <laughs> I did this very nice. I was touching it. Ooh, it's very cool too. Very cold. It's real. <laughs> they're very big because they're like they look like cylinder blocks. C- cylinder blocks. C- cylinder. <laughs> you mean cinder blocks? <laughs> cylinder. Are they? N- no, that's not a cylinder. Cylinders round. <laughs> you- <laughs> my bad. Yes, yes, yes. Cinder. Cinder. <sighs> I'm I'm gonna qu- I'm gonna quote a famous line by by a great thespian. English, do you speak it? I do. Ah, uh, good. She speaks two languages. Thank you for catching that. And now I know it's cylinder, not cylinder. C- you don't even pronounce cylinder correctly. <laughs> cylinder. <laughs> hey, there's plenty of things you can't you know say correctly either. But, yes, most most of them are things involving food. Yeah. Like what? Give me an example. Carne asada. Wrong. <laughs> Jalapeno. Oh god. Quesadilla. Yes. Quesadilla. Yeah. Oh. It's how it's spelled. No. It the is. Double L makes a Y sound. It, it, no, it doesn't. Yes, it does. So, Did you know? So it's not will. It's while. No, actually, they, they they say will, but it, it has like a little like, like accent. A, like William. A, William. <laughs> William. <laughs> Willie. Willie, yeah, Willie? And, and, and I say this because I was watching a novella with my grandmother the other day, and the main character's name was Willie. <laughs> so there you go. But yeah, we we say Willie. It's Willie. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> okay, so we're still working our way down the drapes, right? Or do we get everybody? Uh, no, Milton. Was Milton. It? Milton, Milton that's his name. See, bingo. This is why we bring Ariel in. <laughs> she knows movies. Kind of. Attention to detail. Attention to detail. Attention to detail. You guys didn't even know his name. Yes. <laughs> they but say his name once in the whole goddamn movie. They, they say it like two times. Because, no, Crybaby's grandma, when she's going off on, you oh, know, why yeah. she loves all of them. And she's like, Milton, you're the ultimate man. Young, stupid, and mean. And it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like the... He, I'm wondering, like, he has, like, the least amount of lines in the movie, and he has, like, the least amount of, like, screen time in the yeah. movie. But it, his parents are the best. Exactly. Well, his, like parents how his mother are was, like, funniest. breaking into tongues. <laughs> <laughs> I am almost, I'm almost convinced that John Waters, like, we need to keep him in the movie because his parents are the funniest goddamn people in the movie. I mean, they're tied with Wanda's parents. Yes. Well, it, they're like two different... I feel different... like Wanda's parents are better. Yeah. Because they're so, like, oblivious to all things. They're you know, oblivious and sweet. Wanda, sweetie, do you want to ride home? Do you... <laughs> That got me. I was like, oh my gosh. That must have been so embarrassing in front of her crew. She's like... Dad, leaning you're against embarrassing the con- me. You're embarrassing me, Dad. Uh, no, Go uh, away. <laughs> it, is, are you sure? Because I really like you. So, look at our son dating that devil woman, going against the light of the Lord. <laughs> Why do you yeah. know if he has Jesus in his heart? And he's like, Mom and Dad, you're embarrassing me. I'm trying to have a good time at Turkey Point. You're like, I'm a teenager. I'm supposed to have fun. And Gosh, it's Dad, stop. God. <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> I, I, was, I thought you guys were going to keep going. No, and then I was like, stopped. And I was like, oh. Dude, you, you were the one talking. Yeah. We were waiting for you to finish your Making thought. Making fun of poor Milton. Poor Milton. Yeah. Poor, poor Milton. Poor Milton. But yeah, those, so those are like the drapes, right? And yeah. the... The squares. Oh, basic... we didn't talk about Pepper. No, we talked about Pepper with her kids, and then she were oh, like, yeah, "Did she yeah. have kids at 11? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. See, see. Attention to detail. Well, what happened I, to that? I don't I think we could. Attention changing. to detail was realizing she had so many kids. Yeah. Well, she's got three. It's a lot of babies. She gives birth to one in literally the final song. <laughs> she I mean, does. That, she does in, in the, the back ba- of the car. <laughs> back, the back seat of a hot rod. I mean, she's got some cred. That baby. I like. Well, she wasn't really in any pain. She also and she's why like, oh, she I'm get in a like car labor. race. Why is she get in, a, in the car during a car race when they're playing chicken? It was warm in there. <sighs> she must have been feeling some form of contractions before. Well, that. yeah, you see, you know, when they're about to get <laughs> in the car. <laughs> Are you breaking like logic up in Crybaby? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> it's only logical. I, I also like how she's like, oh, oh, it's happening. And she just kind of like picks it out of her like, like, laugh like a football. She's, she's not like, even like it. laying down. She's sitting up at what a 90 degree angle and she just pulls this baby out of her coochie. And we see that on the Kardashians. <laughs> Wait, can I say that? Yeah, you can okay. say that. <laughs> <laughs> we, I, oh, yes. Okay, yes. okay, okay. I'm like, wait, but before that, on the Kardashians, <laughs> we see somebody give what now? Yeah, I think it's Courtney. Courtney was on that. 
the yeah, baby she, uh, Mason, Ma- 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 Mason. Yeah, they, they yeah they filmed it. Obviously, they like oh, blurred out her. Oh, her what? They Vagina. don't show it, but they're like, you know, the baby's coming out. And the doctor asked, do you want to pull out your baby? And she's like, did yeah, he? yeah, she did. I remember this clearly because I, I remember her leaning over and she just, you know, basically pulls the kid out of her and mm-hmm. puts the baby into, you know, yeah, onto and her then they chest. Cut the umbilical cord. And I was just like, what did I just watch? <laughs> so, so she goes and pulls the baby out and gets a nice noise you know, right out mm-hmm. and she's a baby now. Yeah. yeah. She literally pulled her baby out of her. This is why I don't watch fucking reality TV. Yet you love it. No. Total divas. Well, if you want, if you want more divas, Kendall Jenner is dating Bad Bunny. He has no idea what that sentence is. No, I know Bad Bunny. He was in the Rumble. Oh, that's right. He, he's a pro wrestler, <laughs> yeah, <sir. laughs> Never mind. Uh, he knows now. He was I, also uh, on uh, Bullet Train. I, I, Ooh, We never got to see Bullet Train. We really wanted to go see that. I love the fact that you know people are like, yeah, Bad Bunny, he's a rapper. I've never heard a single song of him, but I know he can do a five-star five star frog splash off the third row. I know he's a he's a pretty decent <laughs> professional wrestler. I mean, what is it? Um, I like it with Cardi B. The song he, he is in that one. He's in it. He does make a reference to Eddie Guerrero in the song. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> he goes, "Viva la raza." Yeah, he does, and he does a, a frog and splash they, just like Eddie. His new album is actually pretty good. No, it, it is really good. Not pretty good. It's really good. Mm-hmm. And I this is coming from someone that wasn't listening to Bad Bunny. The only Bad Bunny song that I listened to was the one with Drake. <laughs> It's a good one. It's a good one too. Yeah. It's like Drake singing in Spanish. Not that bad. Really? Mm-hmm. Isn't he Canadian? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So cultural. So He's worldly. Cult- yeah. You really yeah. got to get into Degrassi. No, you that's should, not yeah, happening. Yeah, watch Degrassi. No, the it's only so thing, much the only so thing good. I know. Jimmy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here's the only thing I know about about Degrassi, and then we'll we'll, we'll move on. But my buddy, um, John, we Which hanging out. One? With, uh, Kim. You have multiple. I have, John I have like eight He's friends. He's got multiple Johns in his eight, life. I have like five friends named <laughs> John. I have nine. I have like eight, five friends named John. All of them play magic. All of them are Asian. One of them <laughs> were playing magic, and he's like, "Hey, they're dude, all, they're all Asian. All of them. Every last he one loves of them. Asian Johns. <laughs> Weirdos. So we're playing magic, and he's like, and he makes a reference to like wheelchair Jimmy, and I'm like, "What is that?" <laughs> yeah. And he's like, and, he pulls, and he's like, you don't know about this? And he pulls his phone out and he Googles <laughs> wheelchair Jimmy and he shows it to me. And it's Drake in a wheelchair. Yes. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? There, there's a there's an episode where he's learning how to drive, but they give him a special car because obviously he's mm-hmm. in a wheelchair. But, I don't know why. I was he that. always in a wheelchair? No. That's why you got to watch Degrassi to yeah. see what happens. Okay, so. Have you seen Vampire Diaries? No. Elena's also in. in uh, yes, she is. She's in Degrassi, mm-hmm. too. A vampire Diaries? No, the only I don't I, again. I've never seen Vampire Diaries. I don't know anything about that. That's a pretty good show. It is. Is it? Mm-hmm. I talk about it often. <laughs> I thought Team you talked about. Or Team I thought you talked about <laughs> True Blood. No, I don't watch True Blood. <laughs> Look, I just wait. like Joe Manganiello. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. Oh, but that's a tough question. Team Stefan or Team Damon? The bad boys, Stefan. I mean, uh, Damon or, or I'm gonna pull a Catherine. Why not love them both? <gasps> She does. They're they're both equally because they're brothers, mm-hmm. and you're like, which one do I choose? One is like, they're both. I don't even know how to explain. They're both very attractive, and one is like the bad boy, and then one's a little bit like kinder, but then also has like a like a like there's a thing. Some, there's a thing about him. He's not completely good. <laughs> but then you also have Damon, who's who a has bad boy, but he's, he's a bad also, boy. But he, yeah, he's, he's got a heart. He's a softy. He's a softy. Low, low, really low key. L- really low really key, low key. <laughs> on the <laughs> on the lowest of key softy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He makes an effort not to show the softest, but he will die for Elena. He will. I don't get why they loved her so much. To be honest, is it like she's the, cute? I guess she's it, cute, but she has no personality. I'm sorry. Is it like the same thing with like Bella in Twilight, where she has zero personality? And Dean you're like, has why entered the, fuck the chat. <laughs> He's even I'm, waiting to talk about Twilight. <laughs> Look, she is the most boring character ever. No, I think maybe Bella- it's just Kristen Stewart. Though. No, yeah. No, no. Kristen Stewart's actually like a really good actress. If you you could sh- uh, see her in the movie Underwater, it's like this horror movie. It's she's very good in that movie. No, but as Bella. Oh, and Bella, yeah. She looks like she's in pain the whole time. Yeah. In the book, yeah, she's kind of more on the, you know, little bland side, but. I like how you were gonna try to be like. I mean, in the book, she's better. You're like, nah. In the yeah, she she's just about as bad <laughs> as the book. Wanted to give her compliments, but you uh, put it. I was like, oh, 
you you've read all the books you've yeah. seen all the movies yeah. and you're still like bella's like ah, okay you know she's kind of boring and shit yeah so uh, team team edward team jacob over jacob there. thank you <laughs> Yes, he, Thank you. He stands. The one that's not a fucking weird stalker. <laughs> that's a decent human being. Who's low key like a pedophile because he's like what, a hundred years older Ed- than her. Exactly. <laughs> Ed- if, if, if Edward Just did not he look, has a, he looks like a teenager. He doesn't even look he's like hot. a teenager first and foremost. If oh, Edward I forgot, did she... not look like Robert Pattinson, everyone would be like, oh, he's grooming. He's grooming. grooming for sure. She absolutely hates Robert Pattinson. Really? <sighs> I wouldn't say hate, but. I don't know. Like, I watched Batman, right? Yeah. I didn't like him as Batman. Really? He look. He's not the... Is is it the look or is it the performance? Uh, Maybe both. Like, he just doesn't... Because, like... You're not into saying emo boys? No. A little little bit. Yeah, you are. I I guess. But, but... He's supposed to be, like, a playboy. This was not playboy. I had the same uh, critique of it because I like my Bruce Waynes to have like the the, the Playboy air, right? Yes. and then they're sad like, yes, boys he, away. He, right? he he lost his parents. He deserves to be sad boy, right? Yeah. Right. But he's also a Playboy, right? I did not. That was no Playboy. I'm he, sorry. It, the thing is, he should show off that he's like in front of the cameras, Playboy model on the arm, whatever. And as soon as they're in the car, he's like, "Don't fucking talk to me." You know, I'm I'm a sad boy mode now because the cameras aren't around. Like, I would like that more. Yeah. You know? If it's they a, made him more like a, you know, more playboyish, I'd be okay with it. I like me a sad boy, but then again, I'm dating a golden retriever, so I kind of contradicted myself. Well, you know, I'm I'm very happy go lucky. <laughs> you really are. I try my best, you know. But uh, if you're looking for a Robert Pattinson performance or movie that might like change your mind, the Lighthouse is very very good. He's the very very good in that. It's, it's with Willem Dafoe. It's a black and white movie. Uh, it's directed by the same guy who did like The Witch and The Northman. Um, She's not going to know what that is. Okay. I, I, I did watch the good. trailer to The Northman and I was like, whoa, I got to watch this. Oh, that movie is <laughs> fucking metal. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Okay, I, the I last 10 what... minutes. Oh, she should be on the side know. of my van. I don't even remember the movie that I went to go watch, but that trailer got me hooked. To me, my, my brother was like, we need to watch this movie. And he watched it without me. That wow. freaking jerk. That, that, that bastard. I know. And he was like, dude, it was the best movie ever. <laughs> it is Salt very in the wound. good. And I was like, so you watched it behind my back, and then you have the audacity to be like, it was the best movie ever. I saw the movie in the theater. It <laughs> I was know. so good. I remember. Yes. I'm yes. Just... And you know how like some movies have like really good trailers, and then you're like, oh, I'll get you all hyped to watch the movie, and the movie's freaking lame? Yeah. Oh, all the time. He said, it speaks the truth to the movie. It was badass. Because the trailer where we're like, oh my gosh, like... When he grabs the fucking spear on his throne and just <laughs> yeah. launches that back and kills yeah. the dude. It's fucking... <laughs> Again, that movie should be painted on the side of my van. Like, like we're in a van? fucking... Van? Look, I'll <laughs> buy... Suddenly you have yes, a van? van? I'll, buy, uh, I'll buy the stereotypical, like, 80s panel van where you get the fucking dragon on the side and shit. It'll be great. Oh. But yeah, if you want to see The Northman, I got I got a copy. I got a 4K copy. Oh, 4K you, you'll copy. You'll like it. Yeah. It's got great movie. Great yes. movie. Dean okay. doesn't buy no basic DVD. <laughs> it's gotta be 4K I've, or nothing. I've <laughs> evolved. I have I've reached a new stage. But Crybaby, I don't know if they have a 4K of this. I don't believe so. I, I will say I ended up I could not handle the ads from the link you oh, sent me. Oh dude. I, I had to rent it on Amazon. I was like Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Where did you where did where was the link that was sent? Um, I forgot what it was, but I ended up watching the same link and I forgot that that site is just It was ad, ad after ad yeah. after ad. Like the, I couldn't find my DVD, so I'm like, okay, I'm like, I'll just watch the was, same link, and I was just like, oh, it was man. so annoying. I yeah. could, I didn't even get 20 minutes in because it was just wow. so annoying. Uh, it was a, the every five minutes there was an ad. Yeah, I don't even think it was five minutes to be honest, because I remember there was like already like four ads before I even got to the 15 minute mark. Yeah, that that's the problem with like stuff like Tubi and things like that, where it's just like they're not like oh, right between scenes they'll do it. Sometimes it's like mid sentence, mm-hmm. mid song. And it's like it, so it ruins annoying. the whole thing, yeah. And I couldn't, I couldn't stand it. I was like, I'll lose my my three dollars and forty cents. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't handle it. I needed to watch it through and through. It'd be like that sometimes. And I don't like watching movies like halfway. It's true. I don't. I, I don't know how people do that. I need to watch it completely. I don't care if I stay up till three a.m. I'm gonna watch it. Hmm. To the end. Interesting. Do you do you do that, Becky? 
I'll pause it. They created that oh pause button for gosh, a reason. Oh my gosh, no way. Oh. This, this here has been a, a thorn in our relationship for years. The <laughs> movie the me- starts. One of the many we thorns. We do not stop until the movie is over. Okay, I get if it's like a like a three plus hour movie if you need to do like the bathroom break or whatever. Intermission. That's why God created intermission. That's fine. But for you to be like, I'm going to watch this tomorrow. Hell no. All in or nothing. When the movie's ninety minutes, and you're like, well, I'm like thirty five in. I'll pause it. I'll just. I hate it. I did. Morning. I did do that for um. What are the Marvel movies? The what is it? Shang Chi. Shang. Oh oh. oh. The three Shang Chi. Shang Chi. I think is what yeah, it's yeah. called. The, yeah. The rings of power or something. So, something like that. The, yeah. The three. The ten there's, rings there's of. There's so many goddamn Marvel movies that yeah, it's hard to keep track yeah, of there them. Are. Um, I remember I watched it and I left it off at like the last like twenty minutes or something like that. Mm-hmm. I completely forgot about it. Just no interest to go back. I just forgot about it. I but mean, then I went, I went back and finished it, right? But I was like, damn, this is really good. Like, why did I stop? I mean, I did that to Elvis. I paused it because I got busy doing something else. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll get back to it. It's been months. And I'm like, I should probably finish or I should probably start the movie over and watch I guess it. It speaks to the actual movie and how it is. If you're not, if you don't remember that you didn't finish it. Have, have you seen Elvis? <laughs> no. No. It. I like the movie, but that movie is definitely held up by how good Austin Butler is as Elvis. Yeah. He did really good. I mean, in the little snippets that I, the snippets I saw, they're freaking, he's, he looks good. Mm. Which was what really matters to you. Yeah. Yeah. Austin, you're looking good, buddy. (laughs) Austin Butler, if you hear that, Ariel, she's available. (laughs) She's open. I, I'm an OG. I saw him when he was on Wizards of Avery Place. Of course. On Disney Channel. Of course you did. Wait a minute, he was on Wizards of Waverly yeah, Place? Yeah, Who's he was on? He was a love interest to Selena Gomez. That's Austin Butler? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was well, one of, one of one of the many. There's oh. a lot of guys on there. Oh, okay. Wait, he was the... Yeah, it was when they were at Jesus. a... We're, she we're... was a cheerle- She's a cheerleader, and I think he's a basketball player. We're, we're, going, we're going deep into like the fucking Something. Dean memory bank of Honestly, watching the Disney Channel. anything Disney Channel or Disney, talk to me about it. Talk to you about <laughs> it. So, Crybaby, not a Disney film. Definitely not. But oh. there's an Enchanted Forest. You remembered that. I like how I remember the Enchanted Forest. <laughs> this speaks to my character very much. <laughs> Favorite song? <laughs> Mr. Dirt, Sandman. Dirty, dirty, dirty feet. <laughs> dirty <Tiny> underwear. <laughs> Enchanted Forest. Ariel has a type, and uh, we are getting a psychological evaluation here. So, Becky, where do you want to go with well, this? Well, I mean, we were talking about the drapes, and you were ready to jump to the squares, but I think we have to talk about Grandma Drape. Oh, Ramona. yeah. R- okay, okay. Ramona question, and question. Iggy Pop, yes. the grandparents. Question. Why were they calling him uncle when it's, is it their uncle or their grandpa? Are you talking about Iggy Pop? Yeah, they're calling him uncle. Uncle Belvedere? Yeah, uncle yeah, yeah. I, I think it's just a thing where, you know. That's so weird. Well, and then I was like, oh, this is his uncle being butt naked in a bucket, bathing I, himself. And then. <laughs> I don't want to be stereotypical, but the stars and bars, grandma, uncle. There's implications here. Yeah, that was my. I was like, oh my gosh, is this like some incestual family we got but going on here? But they said the babies are like... actually Johnny Depp's babies. <laughs> no, <laughs> they've been together for ten years. Ten years. So I'm assuming they're not related. It's probably just a thing where it's like that's weird to call you grandpa. So maybe I'll just call you uncle. Just like when, like more casual, like you know when single moms, you know, in movies are like. Yeah, this is my boyfriend. Just call him Uncle Rico. Here you go. That's so weird. Just call him by their first name. Yeah. Why you gotta bring Uncle into it? I know. It, would it be weird to be like, hi, dad? And he's like, I ain't your dad, kid. No, he's just he's like, he's I'm just paying your mom. It's just a friend. If, it, if it's a boyfriend, it's still a friend. It's my friend, Billy. <laughs> Billy. <laughs> I don't know why that came to my <laughs> So, the grandparents, right. right? Yes. Ramona and Belvedere. Uh, Ramona... She was crazy. <laughs> yes. I like uh, her fits, though. Her fits were pretty wild. You like the, what was it, a goose hat or The whatever? goose hat, and then at the end where she's wearing the, the Harvey, <laughs> the, <laughs> the corset. <laughs> a lot of corset work in this movie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Ramona was a good time. Also, when they're in the jail, when they're going to break them out. Yeah. She was, like, dancing all provocatively against the, the, the glass. The glass. And I was like, you are an older woman doing this trying to free your grandson with another and you're over here dancing like this i mean the other jailers that it's a juvenile detention center 
first and foremost. And I like how the, yeah, but the juvenile language she's dancing in front of is probably like 32, <laughs> got like kids, mortgage payments, you know. And you've got granny at the end of the line that's trying to dance provocatively and it's just. I was like, why Why couldn't they bring another like drape girl? Also, I like They the ran comment. out of drape girls. That's why. I hope we talk about the, the, the hoe. What's her name? Lenora? <laughs> yeah. Lenora. I yeah, all oh the comments <laughs> about her were freaking hilarious. Like, you hag. <laughs> he likes sh- my... He, my brother likes his girls um, bad, not cheap. Or when and he would have touched your chest with a 10-foot pole, is what she said. <laughs> oh. I mean, L- Lenora is just like one of these scary chicks that you hear about, and it's like, yeah, that's why we don't talk to people, because... You get crazy. Here, like she just saw Johnny Depp was like, "I'm pregnant with this child, girl." I, that's the best scene when you know they're at the enchanted forest and she's like, <laughs> the fake "Look, baby. I had my baby." She Ooh. just steals it from a little girl next to her. That's the best part. And stupid Allison's like, "Oh, she was lying," and it's just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> she is like the she's objectively the the villain of the movie, mm-hmm. right? Like the squares are just like douchebags. But she's like evil. They set his bike on fire. I know they set his bike on and fire. And they put but sugar in their brand, gas tanks. Yeah, his brand new bike, and they set it on fire, and caught every everything else caught on fire because they rolled it down the. Also, I don't think motorcycles work that way. I don't think it would have gotten that far. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's Dean's gonna have to test it. I mean, two wheels down a slope. I think it would have fallen over and caught the entire part. Like grassy area that was there on fire speaking of details did you live the part where they throw the torch away and you see it hit the ground and roll and it just kind of lights that hill on fire yeah, 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 and they yeah. keep running i was like dang that's really destructive they just did not care this was the 90s you know back when movies were made by artists damn it. exactly and i was like they couldn't like run with the torch and then used it you know no it's like why'd you have to set the poor patch of grass on fire what did the grass ever do to you what did the grass do to you? <laughs> Who hurt you? Allison. Allison. Did. Allison did. <laughs> I mean, I love that fight scene. I think we have it, to talk it was pretty about good. It. it was pretty good. It that whole that whole sequence from like the the makeout session all the way to like when they get pulled off. It, it was is, just so fast paced too. They, uh, it it's like oh, this is probably like you know 10, 15 minutes in the movie, right? Like that's like a good chunk of the movie, and it goes by in like five. It is so goddamn quick. Between, you know, my parents were killed by electricity. (laughs) To, you know, I love you, Allison. I I like how she's also like, poor guy. Poor, poor crybaby. He was over here trying to make out. And she's over here, yeah, my parents died. Girl, (laughs) you guys are making out and you're talking about your dead parents. What is wrong with you? You want to get more awkward with that scene? So apparently uh, the actress that plays Allison in the movie, uh, what is her name? I just had it. Well, whatever. Her name. Uh, that girl. That, so that rude. Girl. She's this co-star of the movie. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, you remember Johnny Depp? I'm here for Johnny Depp, okay? It's the only reason this this movie held. It's the only reason. Sorry. But we, she, we should talk about that in a second, but yes. But she was 18 at the time of this film. Uh, she was the youngest on the cast. She brought her mom with her every day to set. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> so mom was there for that scene where they're rolling around making out. And she didn't have, you know, too much experience. So basically, Johnny Depp taught her how to French kiss on camera. Oh my gosh, the French kissing mm. scenes with everybody, not just them. Oh yeah, it, was, I, it and, weirded and, me out oh, because I'm like, what is going on? Oh, it gets better. Milton and and Hatchet, Hatchet, yeah. piece, theirs was intense. It was like they're like filleting each other's <laughs> tongues, and then they were like, I don't know, like the tips of their tongues were just like flicking each other's, and I was like, this is really weird. Oh, it gets better. So her name is Amy Locane. She was 17 when she played the movie. So, <gasps> so you know, she, yeah. Wait, how old was Johnny Depp during this? Scene? I mean, okay, so he did um, Nightmare on Elm Street in 84, and this is 1990, so he's got to be in, like, his mid-20s. And yeah. after Nightmare on Elm Street, he had done 21 Jump Street, and that's the reason why he got into Crybaby, because he didn't want to be typecast as... A TV actor, yeah. Exactly. So he was like, I want to break out, and I want to do different roles. Mm-hmm. But the makeout scene with everybody when they're dancing, so all the extras weren't told that they were going to be making out <gasps> with each other. Oh, my God. They just thought, you know, we're going to be doing this dancing scene. Okay, we're ready. That must and have been then, so awkward. Right oh before they, they started rolling, they're like, oh, by the way, you guys have to make out. Okay, action. And then they're... 
I love I love when you say that, and because I remember there's these two extras. I think they're like the first ones we cut to, and the guy is like just uh, like yeah. all into it, and the girl is like, "Oh, you're gonna try and upstage me, sir? Let's see." And she's like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And they're they're literally they just did like focus flicking, on them. For a good they're just minute. flicking their tongues at each other like 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 two snakes locked in battle. And just, ah. Oh. Yeah, yes, so I yes. remember reading that, and I was just like, "Oh my god, I would be so mad that if I was an extra." So just like, <laughs> you'd be so mad. We were like, "Man, can, can I just go be Allison?" Like, <laughs> no, no. Come but, on. Okay, so Allison, when they're first making us, she's like, "Will I get mono?" Yeah. <laughs> I I love that. And it was hilarious because it's <laughs> so fifties, so fifties. It uh, just it was it, hilarious. It's also like that, like that one level subtext of being like, <laughs> I don't want to get like pregnant, and he's like, Don't worry, baby, I, my pull-out game is strong. It's fine. <laughs> she wasn't worried about. She wasn't worried about getting pregnant. She was like, Am I gonna get mono? <laughs> or when they're getting arrested, and she's, you know, well, what about you know this Lenora chick? You know, she says, you know, you've done this, and he was like, I'm burning inside to touch you, baby. <laughs> they want to touch <laughs> yeah. with her. Just like what? <laughs> And then he's like, Lenora, you hag. <laughs> <laughs> Shoves her into the mud. I, I do Allison like how he just like up. strong arms her into the mud like he's going in for the touchdown. <laughs> and she, Allison's like a nice girl, you know, let me help you. She's like, I'm pregnant with this child. And she's just like, and desk, she bought a full on ring. It's like, yeah, I'm pregnant. And he proposed. <laughs> and then she turns into a square at the end of the movie. She just wanted to get in. She was like. Somewhere. What, what's the, the boyfriend's name? Baldwin. Baldwin, she was that's my next target. Mm. They deserve each other. She's going for status. Yeah. I don't know why she didn't do that in the first place. Girl, you got money. She She uh, wasn't working it. I'm sorry. I feel that Ariel would be a fan of gentlemen prefer blondes. Yeah, I think you need to watch that movie. It's Marilyn Monroe. And that whole movie is like, I mean, you know, love's <laughs> nice, but you see that that bulge in his pocket? You see that wallet going on there? My God. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> that wallet, nice. Oh, well, oh no, no, like no, straight up. No, like, that, that, that's a joke in the she movie. She's a gold digger. She's not a gold digger, but she's, Honey. she's performing a scene in the movie and her boy, her fiance sitting in the audience and uh, she tells her best friend, she's like, hey, she's like, did you notice that bulge in his pocket? And she's like, her best friend's like, what are you talking about? She goes, it was definitely a ring box. And sure enough, he comes in the back, and it's um, oh my it is a ring. Yeah, yeah. It's, and he, he proposes, and then you get married in France. But it's just you know, she's up on stage performing, and she's able to key into his pocket. That and- twenty twenty vision well, in the yeah. dark because it's obviously the lights are on you, right? So, you- dang, she noticed the bulge. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I, I must recommend have been that. a pretty big box. Well, he <laughs> daddy got money, so. Yeah, so I, Lenora was not playing her cards right. I'm no, sorry. she was not. No. Why did she want to get with uh, you know? Because he was Mr. the king Walker. of the drapes. He was the king. The king crybaby. Yeah. King crybaby. I, I, also, I love the little tears. Oh my gosh! When Allison was crying and she feels this, <laughs> <laughs> he lost it in the theater. <laughs> There's, yes, so there's a scene. It's it's like their first night. It's the first night Crybaby's in jail, and they're just doing the song number, right? And Crybaby's like doing a single tear, and Allison is crying into a jar, <laughs> saving her tears. And then here's on the radio that the girl is pregnant, and they're going to get married, and then she drinks it. She drinks her tears. She's like, you don't deserve my tears. And I'm takes just them like, back. that must have been so freaking salty. <laughs> I, I I would imagine it's not – she did. they're not actual tears. It's probably obviously, just water. Obviously. Y- yes. But – it was one of the funniest fucking things in the movie. <laughs> She's like, I spit on your tears. <laughs> <laughs> and then when he gets his uh, tattooed tear, and he's like, he's like, this one's for Allison. <laughs> that tear's always going to be here. With oh, me. Just like, also, I'm watching that, and I'm like, I don't, I don't, I'm never, I don't have tattoos, but I'm very informed about tattoos, and I've seen a lot of documentaries about like weird prison tattoo yeah. culture. Bro, you don't, you don't just do a fucking like staple point tattoo on somebody's fucking eyeball. <laughs> What is wrong with you? Yeah, but it, it just it wasn't really touching it. See, attention to detail. They didn't even play that right. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. She's good. Mm-mm. She's Mm-mm. strong. She she knows her like prison tattoos. Tapping. It was just like little tapping. I'm like, what? There's like not even ink on the needle. That's why she always wears long sleeves. Ariel actually just has full like, <laughs> full like sleeve. sleeves tattoos going on. You know, it would suck because if I went to Japan, I couldn't. Well, I would only have to wear long sleeve. They look, they frown upon tattoos. Do they? Do they think you're like Yakuza? Probably. Oh, tangent. My friend, uh, <laughs> she went to go. She went to 
Japan to teach kids English, right? Mm. That's what he was trying to get us to do. Because uh, it's <laughs> you like know a what thing you did? just need like a bachelor's degree and they'll just pay you to teach English. Yeah, you don't even I, have to be in The thing is that they already know English mm-hmm. so that you're not going in there just speaking Japanese, obviously. They yeah. have already like a foundational, they have foundation on English, right? Uh, and they're teenagers. Well, at least the, the group that she got. Mm-hmm. She freaking asked the class about the Yakuza. I was like, why is she so chaotic? I'm like, why are you asking these poor kids about the Yakuza? And that the girls were like, oh my gosh, we don't talk about that. Right? You're like, if if, if they know you asked us, they'll, like, they'll come for you. It was like, no, don't talk about that. And then the guys were like, yeah! I want to imagine the, all the kids were just like, honey, they... They, they ran those guys out in like the fucking 90s. Like, yeah, you know, let's just fuck with a white girl. It'll be fun. It'll be hilarious. <laughs> She's not white. Oh. Wow. Okay. Just let's profiling. fuck with the American. Wow. 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 Very, but it was very American, though. Yeah. Mm. It's like, why are you asking about that stuff? <laughs> just because you're curious? Was she curious? She, clearly. Mm. Asking her group of high school students what about the Yakuza. What are they going to know about the Yakuza, first and foremost? You know, Dean would get there and he'd be like, you guys, I have to ask you one question. <laughs> Tatsuo! And they would all yell back, <laughs> Kenya! Tatsuo! Kenya! And we'd watch Akira. Like, that's how I would teach them English. I'd watch, I'd show them the sub and then the dub. And then I'd be like, now you have to write the entire script from memory. And that's how you're going to learn English. I feel like English. that would that would work. Right? And then you'd talk about the Akira slide the whole time. Yeah. yeah. You get culture and you get language. Strong foundation. Mm-hmm. Strong foundation. I should do that for myself. <laughs> Watch Akira? I Te- teach English in Japan? I don't know if I'd be a good teacher. A- I your friend th- asked about the I Yakuza. Can't even I say don't s- think you're fine. Cinder block. You think I'm going to go t- <laughs> teach Japanese students that would, English? That would be like the thing. Like a bunch of like, you know, ja- Japanese like students come over to America and they're like, we- it's a weird thing. This whole generation just calls them cylinder blocks. Mm. It's fascinating. But and, then, cry, baby. and then you get Dean getting mad. It's a cinder block, it's a damn cinder it. Block. Do you know what a cylinder is? Apparently she did. <laughs> I, I did know what a, a cylinder was. Yeah, she got confused. I she took, said the wrong I thing. Geometry. I was actually really good at it too, so. <laughs> so Crybaby, the movie the movie we are talking about. Yeah, occasionally. Occasionally. Because um, I mean, man, we've jumped all over the place. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this episode. <laughs> yes. One of our most chaotic episodes yet, but it's been a fun time. It has been fun. It's been fun. But we were talking about... We talked uh, about the grandparents. We talked about the makeout scene. We talked Lenora, about... that hoe. That, that hoe. <laughs> that <laughs> hoe over there. Um, I know you love the prep school. I I don't know if I love the prep school. I find it fascinating. Because the prep school. The, the whole thing where it's just like, you know, uh, what are the four B's, children? What oh, my God. When they have the kids... In the orphanage, in those little boxes. Oh, yeah, freaking hilarious. <laughs> yes, the whole like square <laughs> culture where it's just like, oh, they're the rich upper class, you know, blah blah blah, blah and they're at this like country club and they're doing the clubhouse. And then you see the orphanage, and it's like the bro, chatterbox they, they or- are. orphanage where you know it's like, look at this one. He he vacuums. Yeah, he's and he does really this. Good. It's like, like, you sure you don't want this one? He does He'll, windows. He does windows. <laughs> <laughs> he does windows. <laughs> is is that some- now? Now, if you were adopting a child, do you adopt the one that is like, hey, just saying, eight years old, do my own laundry, I do windows, I can make a pretty good cocktail, come on. Is, would that sell you on adopting that child? That sounds so bad. <laughs> but. I, I picked the drape kids. <laughs> the, the little boy could drive the car. That's true. He drives cars. He does drive cars. They Imagine if you really had to be somewhere and you're like, kid, get in the car. You're driving. You could be like, "Hey, I gotta get to work, but I want to catch a couple extra Z's on the on the commute." Kid, get the keys. Mm-hmm. He works. I like steal hubcaps. Also, that little girl that was like, I guess not that great. She's like, "Oh, don't even pay attention to that one. She needs a lot of work or something like <laughs> yeah. that." It's like that poor girl. She looks like a little homeless child in that <laughs> box. You couldn't even present her nicely. Yeah the the squares. They're uh, what's a good word for them. They're- very odd they are as odd as the drapes but their oddity is cruel instead of their oddity being um endearing i, I guess i mean to celebrate the drapes being a rest or at least crybaby 
they do a long conga line of the bunny hop through town. Yeah, they yes. did. I thought that was really weird. And I was just and like, they show up at her house. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, your boyfriend just got arrested, but I'm going to come here and you can come with me. Your other boyfriend. Your other boyfriend. Yeah. Also, Allison, kind of a hoe. Yeah. Why are you leading on the other fool if you really liked Crybaby? What's wrong with you? I, I was also like kind of confused on that. I was like, Allison, like. Like, were they together? This, I, yeah. Like, what, were they boyfriend were they, and girlfriend or were, were they, they just official? like. They never mention that because she's not. Sh- she's gonna have a hard time with crybaby because she's just hopping over to different people without. I mean, I would assume they were together, but well, the whole movie takes course of, takes place over the course of what, like two days, a, a day, of, a couple of days, a week, maybe. I I don't, I don't know if it's a week. Well, I don't know how long he's in the <laughs> the char- or not the charm school, the um the in jail? jail, the jail. I don't know because it's it was just really fast paced for me, like. Yeah. How do they meet? Did they already know each other? I like a little like context, not like a. Well, the, all the context you needed was <laughs> I just want to be bad. <laughs> all the context you needed. We, Full on Sandra D. Yes, she, she did do a, a Sandra D. Yep, and she embraced it. She embraced that bad girl persona as Sandra D. Sorry, but but we're here for crybaby. That's true. So I'm and on his dark tidy whities <laughs> dark dark ass tidy whities So are, you you mentioned this a, a, a couple seconds ago or a minute ago or God we we go on a lot of tangents maybe even like twenty minutes ago. <laughs> so this movie and Johnny Depp and it's like oh Johnny Depp well that's the reason you watch the movie. Do you think if this movie did not have Johnny Depp in it would it still have like a any cultural like relevance? Like do you think people would go back to this movie if it didn't have Johnny Depp in it and this was his so early role? I think so. You think so? Because it was really weird. It's a really weird movie. It is. And I mean, if they were able to get like Robert Downey Jr. to be Crybaby, I think yeah. people totally would have. I don't know how it would have worked with Tom Cruise or Jim Carrey. I think Jim Carrey would be really weird. Really off the wall. Yeah. That, just think of like all his other. Like, the mask as mask. Crybaby. Yeah, because the mask comes out like a couple years after this. I think mm-hmm. mask is almost 90- the same kind of energy, too. Yeah, really weird, really manic, kind of off the walls. I mean,. If Tom Tom Cruise does this, this is Tom Cruise like you know after Top Gun, where he's like oh my trying gosh. to become going from I being think like action his star career like, would have ended if he had taken this role. <laughs> you think so? I think so because it's so weird. <laughs> it I, I, it does take a certain kind of energy to play this movie, right? Like mm-hmm. you need to be somebody very comfortable with being an absolute fucking like mad lad. Yeah, right? like just imagine like Jim Carrey mask energy, mm-hmm. it, doing the the French kissing scene. That would have been insane. <laughs> it would have been weird. It was, it was already weird. Like, it's already weird. But imagine Jim Carrey. Even weirder. <laughs> For sure. I'm now trying to imagine. I'm now imagining Ace Ventura. Not Jim Carrey. Ace Ventura. Oh. In yeah, yeah, this, yeah, yeah, yeah. In this. Doing, doing the song and dance numbers. Mm-hmm. I The dance numbers probably would have been more, like, off the walls. Because I know Johnny Depp hates dancing. Yeah. He, he didn't do a lot of dancing. Well, he's got two left feet, so he can't dance, and he doesn't like to dance. That's true. Because he can't. So I yeah. think it, I think it works. It goes with you know the the tough guy. You know, like oh, I'm not gonna do a dance number. Tough guys That's don't true. dance. He's over here uh, printing uh, license plates with Allison on it, but <laughs> I'm not he's... dance numbers. That scene gave me very much. Uh, sorry, I'm bringing it back. Uh, Disney High School Musical vibes. <laughs> the boys are back. Oh no. <laughs> High School Musical, Your True Love. What was it? High School Musical 4? Three. There's only three movies. Ah, Becky. Oh, I'm sorry. It's been a long time since I've watched High School Musical. (laughs) The third one's when they they graduate high school. Oh, okay. Yeah. When they're at the... They're at a junkyard junkyard, doing who knows what, and it's just him and uh, Corbin Blue dancing. You mean Chad? The boys are back. The boys are back. (laughs) So when is Zac Efron going to come back to the to the mu- High School Musical franchise? You know, re- give a get a revival. Never, unfortunately, but he still does musicals. He did um The Greatest Showman. Yeah, he oh, did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he did Hairspray. Yes, he yeah. did. It, it it again. It's a fascinating thing to me that Hairspray of all things was the thing that launched John Waters' career. <laughs> it's like Hairspray. I tapped into the cultural zeitgeist. I figured it out, and we're we're off to the races. And then Cry Baby. Sorry, boys. Brought him crashing down. It, is Cry Baby a better movie than Hairspray? Or is Hairspray the better movie? I've actually never seen John Waters' Hairspray. Me I've either. only seen the remake. Mm. I haven't even seen the remake. Really? Yeah. Wow. And this is surprising because I love Zac Efron. Oh, and John Travolta's in the remake. He is. You got John Travolta. I meant. 
I mean, come on. I should probably watch it. I should probably. If I, I can't say it. I Amanda eat. Bynes is in it. She is? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't she like the, the mean girl? No, in that one? she's or? she's the best friend. Oh, okay, okay. I'm trying to remember who Amanda the who the Bynes bad person is. In. Back. I really love her movies. Do you know yeah. why she's Amanda, the man? You know why Such Amanda Bynes <laughs> You know why Amanda Bynes got like pushed out of Hollywood or whatever? Because I think it was this was back like when she finished the Amanda show or whatever, and yeah. they found out oh she did like pot, she like smoked pot or whatever. Oh my gosh, everybody did pot. Miley did pot, and everybody loves Miley Cyrus. Exactly, but mm. they, but that was like back at the time where it's like ooh <laughs> you're you're like young you know teen whatever they can't be like drug people, and she was like I smoked weed at a party once, once, and you pushed versus, me out of Hollywood. Uh, what, uh, uh, Drew Barrymore where she was like oh yeah I went to parties when I was like fifteen, not even fifteen. She was, she like, was like eleven. Was, she was like I was a coke addict by thirteen, mm-hmm. and all these people are fucking pussies now. Speaking of Drew Barrymore, she was considered for the part of Allison in the movie. She was? What mm-hmm. I think would have been a bad choice. I don't know. I love Drew Barrymore. Uh, oh. I think she would have been a... Well, I mean... The can actress she sing? in this Does is... She sing? Well, oh yeah. That was something well, we were going to mm-hmm. gonna mention. Uh, they were actually dubbed. Allison and Johnny Depp, or um, Crybaby. Their voices oh, were dubbed. Oh, so that that's not what Johnny Depp sounds no, like. No, no, no. no. From my understanding, well, I mean, Johnny Depp has a band, right? Yeah, he's been performing. I mean, he, he He's a musician. Yeah, he's yeah. been performing since he was a teenager, but I think it was a thing where they didn't have enough time to sit down and do, like, recordings and then have them lip sync their own recordings. The- so they were just like, let's bring in, like, two actual singers, have them sing the tracks, and then have them lip sync over these tracks instead. Honestly, I should have... Clearly, I wasn't paying much attention to detail because I didn't even notice that they were lip singing. That or they're really good lip singers. Well, well, the other thing is like the um, how the music works. I think John Waters wanted a very wanted a very specific voice and sound for that. Like because Allison voice is like that really high pitch kind of mm-hmm. like mousy sound, mm-hmm. and that's a very specific like style of singing. That... And if you're not really a singer, usually I'm I'm pretty sure if you're like an average Joe, you'll be an alto, which is just like. Yeah. Everybody's basically everybody's an alto unless you have a really deep or high voice, right? Mm-hmm. Um so if you're looking for that like mousy one that yeah, that's not probably, something you have more, that in the I feel back like there's pocket. more altos than there are um sopranos. Sopranos and uh well the other one who cares about the other yeah, one? It's yeah. too deep. <laughs> yeah. Well the other one is and Johnny Depp's like the singing voice is like I think the person who dubs his voice is like a like was like a professional like rockabilly singer yeah. from like the nineties. So, like, that's a very specific, like, he, he wants to sound like, you know, a little bit like Elvis Presley mm-hmm, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if Johnny Depp has that kind of same, like, I don't, singing no. energy. Mm-mm. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever heard him actually sing. But to go with the persona, he needs to sound kind of on an Elvis scale while they dress him kind of Elvis-like in the big yeah. suits when he performs. Mm-hmm. So I think that's that's why that music, so the music in this is very specific. So I think in real life, I think Johnny Depp has a more of, like, talking singing he he does the johnny cash like yeah, yeah i yeah, can't yeah. really sing but i'm gonna talk my words <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly i that i i think i don't know i've never heard him sing before we're gonna have to find feeling. a clip very i have a feeling very unprepared it's... today very unprepared clearly but on Sorry. on the right over here you know we were talking about the music because it's not like hits from the 50s the 60s it's you know kind of it's a lot of it's like really weird obscure movies because every song in this is a real song that was yeah. on like the radio in mm-hmm. the 50s 60s whatever so none of the music's actually written for the movie and it's kind of fascinating how the whole soundtrack is like hey we rated john waters record collection and we kind of just figured it out oh well, my gosh john waters is a big you know music fan but for his movies, he has a music guy that will, he'll tell him, you know, hey, this is the genre or, you know, the years that I'm working with. Go in and he makes him tapes and sends him tapes and like, with, with like you know, however many songs he could fit on the tapes. So when he sent out the scripts for this movie, he had all the songs on these tapes and, you know, whoever got the part in the movie got to read the script, listen to the music and kind of put themselves into what the movie's going to be like. And I'm like, OK, that's going the extra mile. Sounds like a lot of work. A lot of work. <laughs> the the craziest part of that to me is that the crybaby song at the very, very beginning where it's like, oh, this is perfect for the movie. Exactly. Yeah, no, that was like the first record that John Waters ever bought when mm-hmm. he was like 12. Oh, my God. And he was like, yeah, no, this song, it just it just works. And I'm like, that's probably why. Yeah. Is is that why he named the movie Crybaby and based it off of that? I'm curious. That mm-hmm. I would suppose. Because, again, Cause this what a is. a weird name, just in general. Yeah. Crybaby, especially yeah. to have that as your nickname. You're like, I'm this Crybaby. tough, I'm the tough guy kid in the wrong side of the tracks. Oh, what's your name? 
cry baby. That's Mr. Baby to you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he says that. I also like the really fake tear that like yes. that's, it looks hella thick, by the way. Where it's like it looks like glue. It looks like glue and cor- like uh corn syrup dripping down their face. It probably is like corn syrup they have like right on their cheek going down because it is so thick and it's ridiculously like, oh. thick. I like how he even uh, I think he even licks his tears, Johnny Depp at one point. Yeah, it's I think in the jail. Yeah, when Allison yeah, yeah. drinks her tears, he like takes his single one and he licks it. Uh. <laughs> but but you know it was like okay you know Allison she drinks her tears and she goes to sleep and she's very visibly upset. He drinks his. He goes to sleep with a big smile on his face. She's over here you know having a meltdown that he's gone and he's just like, well we'll see what tomorrow brings. Just like bro uh. with his dirty feet on the bed. <laughs> so cry baby. Um, how how did you like the movie? It was okay. It was okay. I think it was a little too weird for me. I was expecting like lovey dovey. That's just dude. You had the reins. I I know. And you just threw him back. At I me. know. If I had to, honestly, at the end of it, I was like, because I told Becky I was gonna watch it twice. One mm-hmm. as like a first starter, and then the second one as like a real analysis. Right. Right. When I woke up this morning and finished the movie, I was like, I'm glad I only watched it once. <laughs> wow. So, so I'm guessing you wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I feel like for anybody that as that you to know, just watch <laughs> one time, I would recommend it. But as like this is the best musical ever, no, 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 no. Okay, sorry. What about you, Becky? Well, Final obvious, obviously, I recommend it's Johnny it. Depp. It's and young. She Johnny recommended Depp. it to me. Of course, yeah. she's gonna- <laughs> I'm obviously going to recommend it. But I mean, it kind of goes with our musical month because I mean. I wanted to make sure that we had a wide range of musicals. Mm. We did like classic Hollywood with Singing in the Rain, The Sound of Music. Gentlemen for Blondes. Gentlemen for Blondes. Um, last week, Moulin Rouge. So it's, you know, just seeing the evolution of musicals. And yeah, you know, this is a 90s musical. It's off the wall. It's campy. It is campy. Yeah. It's also, but it's, it's a fun time. It's also like a throwback kind of musical mm-hmm. thing where it's in a genre that just doesn't exist anymore. The juvenile delinquent yeah, because, story. Because I never, I've never heard of it. But also, I'm not really a big Johnny it, Depp fan. Like, uh, I, I, I like him. I really do. But like, oh, I'm hardcore Johnny Depp. Like some people. Yes. In this I, did, I did watch the, the, his trial. I thought it was freaking hilarious. It was. He was, he, what a character this yeah. man is. I mean, does I, this look like your, your bag of cocaine? Oh, well, yes. There was a lot more there beforehand, but yes, that's mine. Him, like, doing little doodles and, like, sliding <laughs> to his attorney. <laughs> his attorney's like, yeah, that's pretty good, Johnny. Or they'd all pass around candy to each other. Like, you know, it depends who brought the candy that day. And he would, like, turn around. And in the back, like, his attorney him? would be like, yeah, and they didn't even like, take candy. A team. Or, you Isn't know, he dating his, like, the defense attorney from that trial not, now? Not the main girl. One of the other ones on his team. Oh. He was like, hey. You got me $12 million. I want to spend it on you. Let's go to the Bahamas. She swear. Yeah, that, that's a hard offer to refuse. I wouldn't mind the trip to Bahamas, though. I mean, he tried to get you in with Leo right before you turned 25. We're like, girl, take that year. Go on trips, vacations before he kicks you to the curb. So I liked Cry Baby. It was a good movie. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was good. I will say I kind of wish I recorded myself so you can see my facial expressions. Because I was very... It was just... Girl, we, we tried to have you there for that screening. I know. I'm sorry. I don't like to leave my house. Uh, oh, oh, no. We know. <laughs> but I guess, I guess that's the wrap-up time. We've been so. in here for almost two hours. so We almost did. You know, yeah, that we went have. really fast. Yeah. Like the movie. <laughs> Good pacing. No, con- no. That movie was just like, boom, boom, boom. Done. <laughs> <laughs> but we got some business we have to settle before we end this episode. Oh, geez. Just a little. Okay. Because next month... New month, new theme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are we doing next month? I believe next month we are doing a genre that I really enjoy. We're doing westerns. Oh. Big fan of westerns. I like a lot of of old westerns, new westerns. I think it's going to be cool. It's the Marvel genre before Marvel. (laughs) Westerns? uh, Westerns, yeah. You know, they were the biggest thing in the world until they just weren't. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, next week we're going to be starting... Uh, Western month with Stagecoach. John Wayne, John Ford, 1930-something. It's the first. John Wayne. John Wayne. <laughs> and it is the oldest of old school Westerns. But I know Becky wants to ask you something. What? What is your favorite movie? My favorite movie of all time? All, all time, time or at this moment? What do you got? We like, will judge you. It's La La Land. 
Yes. Really? Yes. I love La La Land. Yes. Also because I love I love Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. Mm-hmm. And I just think they have beautiful chemistry. They do. The songs, everything about La La Land is amazing. I don't like how it ends, but it's the realistic option, which I'm okay with. I think the ending's like like perfect. No. Perfect ending no. to they should that have story. ended together. Exactly. However, it is the perfect ending to that story. However, it's the realistic outcome. Yes. But it's a good movie that I think the just everything. Songs are good. Cinematography is good. But uh, any anything else you want to plug? Oh, yeah. Do you want to plug anything? Uh, sure. My cookie business for all my sweet tooths out there. Did you bring us cookies? No. Oh, wow. But where could they go <laughs> if they wanted to get cookies? You could go to my Instagram, which is at the cookie den for all your cookie needs. Handcrafted. Okay. They taste good and they have tasted it. Do they taste good? They do taste good. They do, but I mean, you you plug it and then you don't bring us cookies? <sighs> I forgot, okay? Oh, convenient, convenient. <laughs> so where can they go to follow us, uh, Becky? <laughs> well, if you want to follow us on Instagram, you can find us at the Film Club Podcast, where we post uh, daily stories, upcoming episodes, trivia, and our random adventures. I love the trivia. The trivia is Boo's favorite part. But, you know, not only is trivia great from us, our slideshows on YouTube are phenomenal. Oh, yes. They are the best uh, low-budget slideshows money can buy. Uh, you can find us on the YouTube channel, The Film Vault. The Film Vault on YouTube. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell us that we make terrible videos because they barely qualify. But if you wanted to... L- listen to us. Listen to us. No, we already did that one. <laughs> if you wanted to follow us on social media... No, uh, listen no, to us. Yes. Listen to us listen. on another platform. Follow See? and listen. Yes. You, you we, went we, out we're, we're doing this backwards. We're doing it backwards. Yes. But if you want to listen to us on a different platform than you currently are, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Um, Anchor FM. Anchor FM. We already did our YouTube spiel. And with that... We'll see you next week at the Film Club. 